Hello, I'm Rob Scholl, and today I'll be teaching and from the Sabbath Covenant YouTube channel. And before I do, let me use my spiritual weapon and blow a hole in this present darkness that surrounds us and bind the prince of the power of the airwaves so that my message may be heard. <laughs> Hello, this is Rob Shaul, and what we're looking at here is my book, Creation Cries Out, second edition, The Masroth. It's 400 pages, just full of knowledge and information about the Heavenly Scroll. But today, what I want to do, I'm going to zoom into it. I'm going to read a little bit from the book because we are told that, you know, the word zodiac has some... Uh, Greek meaning and, and it's from a Greek word and it means circle of animals and you know we're taught all kinds of nonsense to keep us from looking at the heavenly scroll because of the message it contains is vital and it's a secret. So let me read from my book here. Uh, we see then the word zodiac would be of Hebrew origin not Greek. In Hebrew the word zodiac is derived from the primitive root zodi or sodi meaning the way or step According to scripture, the Maseroth, or the Zodiac, proclaims the way of salvation from the foundation of the world. It foretells the life story of the Messiah, Yahushua. Yahushua also referred to the way to describe his example as, as he did Yahuwah's will on earth as it was written in the heavenly scroll. Another Hebrew root in the etymology chain is Sodi, meaning secret counsel, a council of friends, a council of familiar conversation with the Creator is what that word means. And there it is. It's a, a Strong's, or actually Brown's Driver Briggs, Hebrew definition of sowed. Uh, you can see it there. Uh, but basically here at the end, this is the main thing. <clears throat> it's, it's a familiar, int intimate conversation with the Creator. It's from the word yasad, meaning to establish, a point, ordain a foundation. The Heavenly Scroll is that foundation. Uh, of the earthly scroll. So the heavenly scroll is the foundation of the earthly scroll and all prophecies. And that's what I'm showing in this video teachings. That it was the foundation of all the prophets. They admit it and they describe it. So the signs of the zodiac uh, from Zodi, Hebrew, would be a circle of friends and secret counsel and intimacy with Yahuwah. Exactly what Enoch said. He said they are the secrets of Yahuwah preserved in the heavens. Now heaven means heavenly scroll. Heaven is a Hellenized word from the Hebrew word shamaim, which means visible heavens in the sky, the place where the stars are located. It's Anytime you see heaven, it's, it should have been translated heavenly scroll because it's specifically talking about the stars. So let's get back to over here. The heavenly scroll is the foundation of the earthly scroll, like I said. So the signs of the zodiac from Zodi would be a circle of friends, a secret council, uh, intimacy with Yahuwah, which is exactly what Enoch said. They are secrets preserved in the heavenly scroll. We see the word Yasad used by Job, referring to uh, the secret of Yahuwah established before the creation of man. Job 15, verse 7, Art thou the first man that was born, or was thou made before the hills? Hast thou heard the secret of Yahuwah? So that's what Yasad means. So to get the full sense of the meaning uh, for Zodiac, looking at the Hebrew word trail, it's not Greek, it's not circle of animals, as we're told. It's Hebrew, coming from the word Zodi and Sod and Yasad. And so looking at those words, this is the actual definition of Zodiac. And this is from my book, The Heavenly uh, uh, Creation Cries Out. Definition, Zodiac. It's the arrangement of constellations or signs as given to Enoch by the messenger of Yahuwah. A circuit or circle the sun appears to travel through the twelve signs along the ecliptic plane over the course of a year. It is a company of signs in close deliberation, consulting together to hold a secret. It is the secret preserved in the heavenly scroll. 
a familiar conversation with Elohim the Creator. It is the original revelation and the ordained foundation of the plan of salvation appointed and established by Yahuwah written in the stars. That is what the Zodiac means. So let's, uh, I'm going to move over now. That was for my book. But before I get going, I really want to establish uh, some things about the Heavenly Scroll. And namely, it is uh, that the Bible is based on it. So again, anytime you see the word heaven in Scripture, just in your mind, say Heavenly Scroll. Because heaven is a Hellenized word. It, you know, we're taught, uh, you know, heaven is some mythical place, mystical place where Yahuwah, you know, exists with a long flowing white beard that he trips on every time he step, it takes a step. And, and we all float around on clouds, you know, playing harps, you know, singing hallelujah all eternity. There is no such place. And that's, you know, that's what we get from Hellenism. Uh, the word heaven, strike it out. What it means is heavenly scroll. It's the definition, the Hebrew word is shamaim, and its very definition is the visible heavens in the sky where the stars are located. It's talking about the heavenly scroll. So anytime I see heaven, I'm going to replace it with the heavenly scroll because that's what it's talking about. So let's just go through some of these scriptures real quick, and we'll see just how much the Bible says that Yahuwah authored the heavenly scroll. We see uh, the book of Enoch, chapter 9, verse 6. Uh, these things and nothing can hide the, itself from thee. Thou seest what Azazel hath done. Azazel is a fallen angel who hath taught all unrighteousness on earth and revealed the eternal secrets which were preserved in the heavenly scroll, which men were striving to learn. Okay, so mankind's always been striving to learn this secret knowledge that the heavenly scroll conspires to keep. Uh, you know, but Azazel came along and he revealed. Uh, the secrets preserved in the heavens, but he did it in such a way that he twisted it into sun worship. And that's where we get the uh, abomination we, we know of you know, today when we look at the Zodiac. Uh, we don't look at the heavenly scroll. We look at these uh, twisted versions of sun worship and magic and all that nonsense. Anyway, moving on, Isaiah forty twenty five and 26 says, To whom will you compare me, or who is my equal, says the Holy One? Lift up your eyes. And look into the heavens. So he tells them to look up in the stars and look at the heavenly scroll. Who created all these? Who brings out the starry host? Now, starry hosts are the signs of the zodiac. Constellations are, are the things that host stars. <laughs> so every time you see a starry host, that's a sign of the constellations. That's what con constellations do. They're groupings of stars. They hold stars. Uh, they're starry hosts. Anyway, he says, who can bring out the constellations of the Zodiac one by one and cause them each constellation by name? Because of its great power and mighty strength, not one of them is missing. So Yahuwah is outright declaring in Isaiah that he is the author of the, of the heavenly scroll. It's he who brings out the starry host or the constellations or the signs one by one, and he calls them each signs of the Zodiac by name. Because of his great power and mighty strength, not one of them is missing. That's why there are 12 major constellations exactly among all cultures over all time. Not one's missing in any culture. There's always 12. Okay. Isaiah 45, 5. I am Yahuwah and there's no other. Apart from me, there is no God. I form the light and create darkness. I bring prosperity and create disaster. I, Yahuwah, do all these things. It is I who, who made the earth and created mankind upon it. My own hands stretched out the heavenly scroll. In other words, he laid out the signs of the zodiac along the ecliptic plain to reveal a hidden message. So says uh, King David in Psalms 19. We'll get that there, there in a minute. And you said, I marshaled the signs of the constellation, the starry host. So again, he declares he's the author. Isaiah 44, verse 24. This is what Yahuwah says, your Redeemer. Who formed you in the womb? I am Yahuwah, the maker of all things. You know, so nobody else made those signs and that, that heavenly scroll. Yahuwah did it. And he proves it. I am he who stretched out the heavenly scroll, who spreads out the earth by myself. Again, Isaiah 46, 5. To whom will you compare me or count me equal? To whom will you liken me that we may be compared? Remember this. Fix it in your mind. Take it to heart, you rebels. Remember the former things, those of long ago. I am God, and there is no other. 
I am God and there's none like me. And here we go again. He starts proving it by saying he offered the Zodiac. I make known the end from the beginning, written in the stars, from ancient times, creation, what is still to come. I say, my purpose defined and written in the stars will stand and I will do all that I please. His will be on earth and is proclaimed in the heavenly scroll, says Yahushua. Isaiah 42, 5. This is what Yahuwah says. He who created the heavenly scroll and stretched them out in order to proclaim a message. He who spreads out the earth and all that comes in it, who gives breath to its people and life to those who walk in it. Again, he says, he authored the zodiac and the message behind it. Psalms 147, 4. Yahuwah determined the number of stars in context. If you read Psalms, it's talking about the number of stars in each constellation and calls each constellation by their name. Again, he created the signs of the zodiac and their meaning. And now David just flat out lays it out. I mean, it, you can't argue with, you know, you might can try to argue with some of the stuff or other stuff I said here, but when you get to Psalms 19, no, it's crystal clear. David says the heavenly scroll, he said heavens, but we, and again, that's Shamim, the heavenly scroll. The heavenly scroll are telling of the glory of Yahuwah. Now, Shaul said the glory of Yahuwah is Yahusha. So let's substitute that in there. The heavenly scroll is telling of Yahusha. And we're going to see that. And their expanse is declaring the works of Yahuwah's hands. Day to day, the zodiac or the heavenly scroll pours forth speech. And night to night, the zodiac reveals knowledge. There is no speech, nor are there words. There, he's talking about the zodiac, the stars and the constellations of the zodiac. Voice is not heard, their line. Now he talks about the line, the ecliptic plane through which the sun appears to travel when viewed from earth, has gone out through all the earth and their utterances to the end of the world. In them, the constellations or signs, he has placed a tent for the sun. Now David is flat out describing the zodiac, which the sun is a shadow or metaphor of a bridegroom, the Messiah, coming out of his chamber. Remember, he said the heavenly scroll in verse 19 declares the glory of Yahuwah, which is Yahusha. The heavenly scroll is the message of the life story and the plan of salvation of Yahusha. So verse 5, which the sun is a shadow or metaphor of a bridegroom, the Messiah, coming out of his chamber to run the course of a wedding and marry the bride, so says the heavenly scroll. It rejoices as a strong man, Messiah, to run his course, the plan of salvation. Its rising is from one end of the heavenly scroll and its circuit, the zodiac, to the other end of them. And there's nothing hidden from its heat. So uh, that pretty much, we could kind of end the whole conversation on that one. But we'll keep going. Uh, in Deuteronomy three nineteen, Yahuwah had told him, when you look up into the sky, in other words, the heavens, the stars, when you look at the stars, and you see the sun, the moon, and the stars, speaking of, speaking of the zodiac, the whole heavenly scroll, you must not be seduced to worship and serve them, the signs of the zodiac. For Yahuwah, your Elohim, has assigned them, the signs of the zodiac, to all people of the world. They were created by Yahuwah to proclaim the coming Messiah, Yahusha. See Psalms 19 we just read, they are not gods, so quit worshiping them. You know, and, and that's the thing that, you know, the, the fact that they're up there and they have this message had, you know, the, the Azazel, you know, told us they were gods and, you know, had mankind worshiping the stars. Yahuwah said, no, 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 no. I created them as a message. They're pictographs. They're not gods. So anyway, Psalms 119. Oh, Yahuwah, your instructions endure. They stand secure in the heavenly scroll. Wow. Matthew six ten. Yahushua says, your kingdom proclaimed in the heavenly scroll, come, your will be done on earth as it is written in the heavenly scroll. He said heavens, which we know is Shamaim. So he was saying, your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is written in the heavenly scroll. And then we see in Matthew eleven twenty five, again, Yahushua, he said, at this time, Yahushua answered and said, I thank you, O Father, King of heaven, or the heavenly scroll, All right? King of the heavenly scroll and earth, because you have hid these things, the secrets preserved in the heavens, from the wise and prudent, and revealed them unto babes. So when you really know how to read scripture, you see the heavenly scroll is all over the place. Now I want to say something real quick before I get into this teaching. <clears throat> okay, one thing I want to make clear is I am not teaching magic and spells and horoscope and the worship of the constellations and all that nonsense the heavenly scroll was corrupted 
and I'm going to show these four here. I'm going to show the progression of the corruption. I teach the one in the upper left-hand corner. It's the heavenly scroll, the one given to Enoch, the one proclaimed by every one of the prophets, including Yahushua. Uh, before I get there, let me go back and read again from my book, uh, Creation Cries Out. <clears throat> you know, we know that uh, the Maseroth, you know, is, I'm not teaching astrology in the sense of divination and fortune telling and card reading and horoscopes and palm reading and magic or any other abominable practice that has corrupted the Maseroth or the Heavenly Scroll. What I am bringing to light in this book and in these teachings is history and the meaning of the stars and the constellations. We are looking to Yahuwah's creation to find the secrets contained therein. These secrets which Yahuwah had written into the stars at creation and revealed to Enoch. So let me read you, uh, you know, from a couple of sources here. Here is E.W. Bullinger in his book, Witness of the Stars, page 9. He says, If we turn to history and tradition, we are at once met with the fact that the twelve signs are the same, both as to the meaning of their names and as to their order in all ancient nations of the world. The Chinese, the Chaldean, and the Egyptians' records go back to more than 2,000 years B.C. Indeed, the zodiacs in the temples of uh, Dendera and Esna in Egypt are doubtless copies. Do you see that? Copies of zodiacs still more ancient than that, which, from internal evidence, must be placed nearly four thousand years B.C., i.e., Enoch. Josephus hands down to us what he gives as the traditions of his own nation back then, corroborated by his reference to eight ancient Gentile authorities whose works are lost. We don't have those anymore. He says that they are all. Uh, they all assert that Yahuwah gave to the Antedevillian uh, or pre, pre-flood ancestors such long life that they might perfect those things which they had invented in astronomy. You know, so in other words, what he asserts is the reason Yahuwah uh, allowed man to live, you know, eight, nine hundred years is so they could figure this stuff out. You know, we look up in the sky and we think, how in the world did they come up with all this, you know, information and or even, you know, we don't even see the signs, you know, and, and the way that the constellations are laid out. I mean, how they get all these pictures and stuff. I explain all that in my book. But Bollinger goes on and says, Ancient Persian and Arabian traditions ascribe its, the Zodiac, invention to Adam, Seth, and Enoch. Josephus asserts that it originated in the family of Seth. And he says that the children of Seth, especially Adam, Seth, and Enoch, that their revelations might not be lost as to the coming judgments of water and fire, they made two pillars, one of brick, the other of stone, describing the whole of the predictions of the stars upon them. And in case the, the brick pillar should be destroyed by the flood, the stone would preserve the revelation. So basically, uh, the, the zodiac that I teach is that which was given to Adam and Enoch and passed down to the sons of Yahuwah, uh, through the Melchizedek priesthood, ultimately down through John and Yahushua. Uh, so that's the one up here in the upper left-hand corner. That's the one, the true heavenly scroll. Now we see up here in the upper right-hand corner, this is where the Greeks took the Hebrew original there in the left, and they perverted it. They changed the throne of, of uh, Yahushua there in the middle with the four beasts singing holy, 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 like John said, and the rainbow throne, throne that Ezekiel uh, talked about, and we'll see that John did too, and all that, they perverted it, and they changed it to Helios, the sun god, and riding on a flaming chariot with four horses, and you know, and then they called him Zeus, and then they changed all the signs, you can see all the signs of the zodiac, they're no longer pictographs like they originally were, now they're, you can see they're all human, uh, they're basically the gods of, of Olympus, you know, and they started worshiping the signs of the zodiac, and that's what Shaul condemned in Romans chapter 1. And then down here on the lower left, we get the Christo pagan uh, zodiac, where they basically took the Roman paganized zodiac and changed all the uh, gods of Olympus and assigned them to the 12 disciples, uh, made saints out of them, and then put Jesus' horse Christian there in the middle, making uh, the hand signal, the gang sign that Jesus makes, uh, that stands for 666. I explain that, too, in my book, The Antichrist Revealed. But I'm not teaching that one either. That's the corrupted version. And then ultimately, here in the bottom right, you know, we have just Satan just coming right out and just pervert, perverting the whole thing into magic and spells and horoscopes. People, this is not what I teach. That's not what Zodiac means. Zodiac comes from the Hebrew word. I explained all that. You know, so let's not put comments on my videos 
you know, watch the video first, please. I don't teach this stuff. I teach the one in the upper left, which are pictographs that tell the plan of salvation, the ones that all the, the prophets saw and described. Okay, so let's move on. What we're going to talk about today is what John saw in the book of Revelation. He looked up into the stars and he saw what he described as a heavenly scroll and a throne. Uh, so we're going to talk about that today in our lesson. So we're, let's just go start with Revelation chapter 1. All right, what we're going to do here is I'm going to read Revelation, and I'm going to show that what John witnessed was the heavenly scroll, and he, he basically was teaching the Zodiac and, and what message it proclaimed that must take place on, here on earth. Uh, that's what the book of Revelation is all about. Anyway, let's read through this, and I'll kind of elaborate as we go. Uh, Revelation chapter 1, verse 12, And I turned to see in the heavenly scroll the voice that spoke with me, who had just spoken to him and identified himself as a left hob, the father. And having turned, he didn't see Yahuwah, no one seen Yahuwah and lived. I saw in the heavenly scroll a golden seven lamp lampstand, which is a, a heavenly menorah, which is the seven classical planets, also seen as seals over the heavenly scroll. I'll, I'll explain that here in a minute. Verse 13, and in the midst of the seven lamp lampstand, or, you know, in the heavenly scroll, he saw one like the Son of Man. That's the constellation Orion. It represents the Son of Man in the heavenly scroll, uh, which also represents the Messiah. And he starts describing the constellation uh, Orion, clothed with the garments of the high priest down to the, down to the feet. Read Psalms 110.3. With a girdle of gold about his chest. He's talking about the uh, chest plate of the high priest. Read Zechariah chapter 3, where Yahushua was consecrated high priest by Yahuwah and adorned the garments of the high priest. Verse 14, the hair, he's still describing the constellation Orion. The hair of his head was white like wool, as white as snow, and his eyes were as a flame of fire. And his feet glowed, glowed like bronze, which had been fired in a furnace, and his voice sounded like many living waters. That's a reference to the water bearer Aquarius, uh, which represents Yahushua mixing the earth with with uh, living water. Verse 16, And in his, Orion's, right hand, he had seven stars. That's the constellation Pallades. And out of his mouth went a sharp two-edged sword, the sword of Orion. It's a metaphor for the word of Yahuwah. Orion carries a sword. And his face was like the sun. The sun is a metaphor of the Messiah. See Psalms 19. Shining in its strength. And when I saw him, the constellation Orion, I fell at his feet as though dead. He was literally scared to death, so to speak, because he was witnessing uh, the Messiah in the heavenly scroll. Now, the heavenly menorah's seven lamps on four branches corresponds to the seven lights of the seven classical planets, uh, moon, Mercury, Venus, sun, Mars, Jupiter, and Saturn, which were also seen as seals over the heavenly scroll. Uh, you know, so as the ancients looked up, they saw these really bright, moving, wandering stars and it was the planets, and uh, they saw them as a uh, heavenly menorah. There were seven, and they also saw them as uh, seals over the, over the heavenly scroll. So Orion represents the Son of Man in the heavenly scroll with the seven stars in his right hand, the Pallades, and a sword coming in the clouds of heaven. Uh, this, this is clear imagery of Orion. Okay, you can see this picture right here. This is Orion. The clouds of heaven is the Milky Way. When they looked up and they saw the constellation Orion riding on the Milky Way, it was described as the Son of Man coming in the clouds of heaven. Okay. Before I go on, let me let's go look at the at the uh, heavenly menorah. All right, here it is. John saw when he was looking at the throne. You see this throne here? Right here, see this menorah in the middle. Uh, this is a picture kind of what John described, the four living creatures surrounding the throne and the 24 elders, and, and there was a heavenly menorah there uh, with seven lampstands. Let's look at those. What those are actually talking about is the seven classical planets. They're also seen as seals over the word of you, and these are all the signs for the seven classical planets. Uh, they were seen as a heavenly menorah. And, and seals, that's what these little red things are. These are these are seals. So there's seven seals in the seven lampstand menorah, and it's talking about the seven classical planets, which were bright lights in the sky. That's what they were seen as. So get back over here to what to Revelation 
<clears throat> you know, we see these seven stars and Orion that uh, John just mentioned up there when he was describing the Son of Man, mentioned on several occasions in Scripture as Yahuwah witnessed the gospel to his prophets who described the heavenly scroll in detail. The prophets of Yahuwah would then elaborate on the contents of the heavenly scroll and giving us the meaning behind the pictographs seen in the stars. We see Orion and the seven stars mentioned by Amos, whose prophetic understanding was guided by the heavenly scroll, as was all the prophets. The seven-star constellation of Pleiades in the heavenly scroll is the brightest of all constellations and easily seen in, quote, the heavens or the heavenly scroll. We see this in Amos 5. Verse 8, Yahuwah who made Pallades, the seven stars, and Orion. So that's what up here John is talking about when he's talking about uh, Pallades and Orion and the seven stars and all that stuff. He's, he's talking about the, the Zodiac. And not only he, but all the rest of the prophets. So we see here in Amos 5, 8, Yahuwah who made Pallades, which is the seven stars, and Orion, the son of man. That's what John was describing. Job 9, 9, Yahuwah is the maker of the bear, which is Ursa Major, and Orion the seven stars of Pallades, and the constellations of the south. So again, Yahuwah made all those things, and we see another reference to Orion and the seven stars of Pallades. Now again, in Revelation 14, uh, 4 through 20, And I looked up in the heavens, the heavenly scroll, and behold, a white cloud, and upon the cloud, which is the Milky Way, one set like, likened unto the Son of Man, which is Orion, having on his head a golden crown, and in his hand a sharp sickle or a sword. So we see again in Revelation 14, 14 through 20, John describing Orion riding on the clouds of heaven uh, holding a sword. So in Amos, we see a clear reference to the heavens and the heavenly scroll having an effect on the foundations of the earth. This is very important. Amos 9, 6. Yahuwah builds his lofty palace in the heavens or in the heavenly scroll and sets its foundation on the earth. So the heavens and the earth are intimately connected. What is portrayed in the heavens plays out on earth. That's what all the prophets were trying to tell us. They were reading the heavenly scroll and telling us what would take place on earth based on what they understood written in the stars. Now in Revelation chapter 4, John starts to describe the throne in the heavenly scroll in heaven. He says, The throne in heaven after this I looked, and behold... A door was opened in heaven, the heavenly scroll, and the first voice which I heard was Yahuwah, the left eye, as it were of a trumpet. Yahuwah's voice is a, like a loud shofar blast, talking with me, which said, Come up here, and I will show you things which must, which must be after this. So he's going to show him the heavenly scroll and what it means and how it relates to what may, must, must take place on earth. Verse 2, And immediately I was in the Spirit, and behold, a throne was set in heaven, the heavenly scroll, and one sat on the throne. And he who sat there had the appearance of jasper and <clears throat> sardis stone, and there was a rainbow surrounding the throne. Now I'm going to stop right there. Let's go over here. This is a, a picture, an artist illustration of what it is that John saw. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to show that what John saw is identical to what Enoch illustrated in his diagram, the Enoch Zodiac. I'm going to show every one of, everything you see here, the four uh, living creatures that surrounded the throne and the 24 elders and all this stuff that John is about to describe. We're going to go back and we're going to compare that with the Enoch Zodiac. Okay, so let's just read it first. Uh, John says, you know, there was a throne in heaven. After this, I looked, and behold, a door was opened in heaven, and the first voice which I heard was Yahuwah, the Eleftah, as it were, of a trumpet talking with me, which said, Come up here, and I will show you the things which must be after this. He's going to show him the heavenly scroll and, and what they all mean, and John's going to describe it. And immediately I was in the Spirit, and behold, a throne was set in heaven, the heavenly scroll, and one set on the throne, and he who sat there had the appearance of jasper and a sardis stone, and there was a rainbow surrounding the throne, like the appearance of an emerald. And surrounding the throne were twenty-four seats. And sitting on the seats I saw twenty-four elders clothed in white robes, and they had crowns of gold on their heads. And out of the throne proceeded lightning and thunderings and voices, and there were seven lamps of fire burning before the throne. He's talking about the, uh, the lampstand, the menorah, which signify and represent uh, the complete plan of Yahuwah. Uh, some translations say seven spirits, but it's talking about the complete plan of Yahuwah. Uh, that's another teaching altogether. And before the throne, there was a sea of glass. It's the stars, the expanse of the heavens, 
Uh, it's, it looks like a sea of glass, like crystal. And in the midst of the throne and surrounding the throne were four living creatures full of eyes before and behind. And the first creature was like a lion, and the second creature like a calf or a bull, and the third creature, or an ox, and the third creature had the face of a man, and the fourth creature was like the flying eagle. And each of the four living creatures had six wings. They were full of eyes all around and within, and they did not cease day and night, singing, Holy, 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 before Yahuwah Almighty, who was and is and is to come. And when those creatures give glory and honor and thanks to him who sat on the throne, to him who lives forever and ever, the twenty-four elders fall down before him who sat on the throne and worship him who lives forever and ever, and bow with their Keep it before the throne, saying, You are worthy, O Yahuwah, to receive glory and honor and power, for you created all things, and by your will they exist and were created. Hallelujah, Yahuwah. Now let's go back and let's look. I'm going to get to chapter 5 here in a minute. Let's look exactly at what <clears throat> Enoch, or I'm sorry, what John was describing. Like I said, here's an artist's illustration. You see all the 24 il- elders sitting on thrones surrounding uh the the main throne there in the middle and <clears throat> you see the seven lampstand menorah the seven classical planets uh, and the four beasts okay let's look at the heavenly scroll and before i do that <clears throat> let's i want to read uh exactly what the heavenly scroll proclaims and this is in my book creation cries out the maseroth now before i continue i want to like i said I want to reveal what the real heavenly scroll proclaims, and I'm going to, it's done in my book. Here's the, this is the cover of my book, uh, the second edition of Creation Cries Out, The Maseroth. Uh, it's a 400-page book, restoring back to the Creator, His creation, and explaining in detail and describing how it was the heavenly scroll was corrupted and what it really says, and, you know, this information that has been hidden from our view and abolished by the Pope and all that other stuff. It restores back the heavenly scroll. I suggest everyone get a copy of that book uh, so that we all may give glory to Yahuwah who created the heavenly scroll. Let me get rid of that. All right. This is the heavenly scroll. You see it back there in the background. And and all these different signs are pictographs with meaning behind them. And the story begins with Virgo, as Isaiah said, and a a virgin shall give birth to a, a king, and you know he was talking about the sign in the sky, the sign of the Son of Man in the sky. Uh, so anyway, it begins at Virgo, and it ends with Leo, and this is the message actually proclaimed by the Zodiac. Let's just read it, because I'm gonna. We need to know this. I'm gonna refer back to this when I'm when I'm explaining John in Revelation what he was talking about, because we'll see that he literally was teaching the Zodiac the true meaning of it. So let's go. This is the message proclaimed by the stars. Virgo. A virgin will give birth to a beautiful, glorious, and righteous branch. The seed of a woman will be a man of humiliation to rise to be the desire of nations and will become exalted first as shepherd, then as harvester. Libra. The scales demand a price to be paid of this seed. A cross to bear, the victim will be slain and purchase a crown. Scorpio. There is a conflict between the seed and the serpent leading to a struggle with the enemy. The enemy is vanquished. Sagittarius. The double-natured seed, servant king, triumphs as a warrior and pleases the heavens, builds fires of punishment, casts down the dragon. Capricornus, or Capricorn. Eternal life comes from his death. He's the arrow of Yahuwah, and he is pierced, yet springs up again in abundant life. Aquarius. He pours out living water from on high. Humanity drinks of the heavenly river, and the faithful live again. He is a deliverer of the good news, the gospel, carrying the wood of the sacrifice over the, all the earth. Pisces. The Redeemer's people multiplied, supported and led by the Lamb. The bride is exposed on earth, and the bridegroom is exalted. Aries. The Lamb is found worthy. The bride is made ready. Satan is bound. The strong man triumphs. Taurus. The, conquer, the conquering ruler comes, the sublime vanquished, to execute the great judgment. He is the ruling shepherd king. Gemini, the marriage of the Lamb, the enemy is trodden down, the prince comes in great glory. Cancer, the great bride, the two houses of Judah and Israel are reunited. They are brought safely into the kingdom. Leo, the lion king is aroused for rendering, the serpent flees, the bowl of wrath is upon him, and his carcass is devoured. 
the lion of the tribe of Judah, rules as king. That is what the heavens truly proclaim, as told in the Zodiac by the twelve signs which are pictographs. Now with that information, we're going to go over here and we're going to look at exactly what John said in the book of Revelation. I just wanted to read this so we all know what the heavenly scroll says and what the plan of salvation is that is written in the heavenly scroll. And as we read, it's a very, very much an anointed message. And it's the same message as the earthly scroll. So with that message in mind, let's go back and let's look. Let's read Revelation chapter 5. And I'm going to go back and forth to that message to show that John was teaching the Zodiac. Revelation chapter 5. And I saw in the right hand of him who sat on the throne, that would be Yahuwah, a heavenly scroll written inside and on the back. It was a scroll made up of 3D heavenly signs or pictographs. Sealed with the seven seals, the, the seven classical planets. And I saw a mighty Malak, or angel, proclaiming with a loud voice, Who is worthy to open the heavenly scroll and to raise it, release its seals? And no one in heaven, nor in earth, nor under the earth, was able to open the heavenly scroll, neither to look at it. And I wept bitterly, because no one was found worthy to open and to read the heavenly scroll, neither to even look upon it. But one of the elders said to me, Do not weep. Behold, in the heavenly scroll, he told him to look at the pictograph of Leo. It's the last sign in the plan of salvation written in the stars. He said, Behold, the lion of the tribe of, of Yada, Judah, Leo, the lion is associated with the tribe of, of Judah, Yada. He says, Behold, the lion of the tribe of Judah, the root of David, has overcome the dragon, Draco, it's the meeting behind the constellation Leo, to open the heavenly scroll and to release, it, release its seven seals. Now remember, Leo is the lion king, is aroused for rendering, the serpent flees, the bowl of wrath is upon him, his carcass is devoured, the lion of the tribe of Judah rules as king. So what John was told to behold was the heavenly scroll. You know, he said here, uh, right here, He said, one of the elders told him, do not, do not weep. Behold, in the heavenly scroll, the, the constellation Leo, the lion of the tribe of Judah, the root of David, has overcome the serpent, and he is worthy to open the heavenly scroll and to release its seven seals. So Yahushua has fulfilled the last sign of Leo, and once he fulfills it, then he, be, he is found worthy to then open it. And I looked into the stars, and behold, in the heavenly scroll, in the midst of the throne and the, four, and the four living creatures, and in the midst of the elders, stood a lamb as though it had been slain. So that's what all these references to, uh, you know, Yahushua being as a lamb that was slain before the foundation of the world. That's not talking about preexistence. That's talking about preeminence. He was written in the heavenly scroll. This whole plan was. And it was of a lamb that had been slain. And it was written before the foundations of the world in the heavenly scroll. So that's what John is seeing. He's seeing in the midst of the throne and the four living creatures, in the midst of the elders stood a lamb as though it had been slain, having complete power and complete knowledge and understanding, which signify and represent the complete plan of Yahuwah, the seven spirits, sent forth into all the earth. <clears throat> Up here, verse 7. And he came and took the scroll out of the right hand of him who sat on it. So Yahushua was able to take the scroll from Yahuwah. And when he had taken the heavenly scroll, the four living creatures and twenty-four elders fell down before the Lamb, each one of them having a harp a gold, and golden bowls full of incense, which are the prayers of the saints. And they sang a new song, saying, You are worthy to take the heavenly scroll and to open its seals, which is the meaning of the uh, pictograph of Ares. Let's go look at that. Aries, there. The lamb is found worthy. The bride is made ready. Satan is bound. The strong man triumphs. So he's teaching the the meaning of Aries. The lamb is found worthy. Okay, so that's what he's teaching. And they sang. We we'll start over verse nine. And they sang a new song. You are worthy, Aries, to take the heavenly scroll, for you were slain. The meaning of Libra. Let's go look at that. Libra, right here, and up here. Uh, the scales demand a price to be paid of this seed, a cross to endure, the victim to be slain, and a crown purchased. That's Libra. So he said, you know, over here in verse 9, And they sang a new song, saying, You are worthy to take the heavenly scroll and to open its seals, which is meaning of Aries. You were slain, meaning of Libra, we just read that, and have it redeemed us to Yahuwah by your blood out of every tribe and every language and every people and every nation. That's the meaning of the pictograph of Pisces. Let's go look at that. Pisces, right here. The Redeemer's people multiplied, supported and led by the Lamb. 
The bride is exposed on earth, and the bridegroom is exalted. So Pisces is the Redeemer's people multiplied, supported and led by the Lamb. Let's go back and read this. And you have redeemed us by you, to Yahuwah by your blood out of every tribe and every language and people and nation, and have made us kings and priests to, unto our uh, Father. That's the meaning of the pictograph of cancer. Let's go look at that. Cancer right here. The great bride, the two houses of Judah and Israel are united. They are brought safely into the kingdom. So that's what he's talking about here. He's, he's brought the people out of every nation and tribe and, and, and language and has made them kings and priests to Yahuwah. That's all the meaning of cancer. And we will reign upon the earth. That's the meaning of Leo. We just read that. We'll go read it again. Leo down here at the bottom. The Lion King is aroused for rendering. Uh, the serpent flees. The bow wrath is upon him and the, the, his carcass is devoured. The Lion of the tribe of Judah rules as king. So he's teaching the Leo, the meaning of Leo right there. And I looked, and I heard the voices of many Malachim. He was looking up at the stars. Surrounding the throne, and the four living creatures, and the twenty-four elders, and the number of them, he's talking about the stars in the sky, which represent angels, was ten thousand times ten thousand, and thousands of thousands. He was looking up at the sky, just tons and tons and tons of stars up there. And he interprets those as angels, saying with a loud voice, Worthy is the Lamb who was slain to receive power and riches and wisdom and strength and honor and glory and blessing and every creature which is in heaven and on earth and under the earth and such as it, uh, and such as are in the sea and all that are in them. And I heard them saying, Blessing and honor and glory and power belong to him who sits on the throne, Yahuwah, and to the Lamb, the Messiah, Yahushua. They aren't the same. Forever and ever. And the four living creatures said, Alleluia, Yahuwah. And the 24 elders fell down and worshipped him who lives forever and ever. So we see in right there in Revelation chapter 5, Shaul, I'm not Shaul, John, the revelator, was literally teaching the Zodiac. He taught the meaning of Leo and of, and of uh, Pisces and Draco and, I mean, it goes on, Aries and Cancer and, and all the different signs right here. This message is what John was teaching. He was reading the heavenly scroll. Okay, so what I illustrated is in Revelation chapter 5, John is witnessing the heavenly scroll. He probably has the Enoch zodiac, the pic, uh, you know, the uh, image that Enoch drew of the heavenly scroll, and he was studying it, and he was describing it, and he knew the meaning of the pictographs behind it, and Yahuwah was giving him further revelation <clears throat> into these things, and that's what John was describing in Revelation chapter 5. And we see all throughout there, like I said, he was, he was describing exactly what these pictographs proclaim. Now what we're going to do <clears throat> is we're going to look at, we're going to go back up uh, to Revelation chapter 4. I read this before. Uh, let me read it again real quick. Let me zoom in there so we can all see it. <clears throat> Revelation chapter 4. I'm just going to read it real quick, and then I'm going to go back, and I'm going to show that John was studying the Enoch Zodiac, and Yahuwah was giving him further revelation. <clears throat> um, so let's look at this. Let me read it real quick. Revelation chapter 4. The throne in heaven, after this I looked, and behold, a door was opened in heaven, and the first voice which I heard was Yahuwah, uh, as it were, as a trumpet talking to me, which said, Come up here, and I will show you the things which must be after this. So Yahuwah was showing him further revelation into the heavenly scroll that Enoch had drawn. Uh, and immediately I was in the spirit, and behold, a throne was set in heaven, and one set on the throne, and he who sat there had the appearance of jasper and sardis stone, and there was a rainbow surrounding the throne, like the appearance of, of an emerald. And surrounding the throne were twenty-four seats, and sitting on the seats I saw twenty-four elders clothed in white robes, and they had crowns of gold on their heads, and out of the throne proceeded lightnings and thunderings and voices and there were seven lamps of fire burning before the throne, the heavenly menorah, which signify and represent the seven spirits or the complete plan of Yahuwah. And before the throne, there was a sea of glass. It's the, uh, the space. He's looking at the black space around the, in the stars. And it looked like crystal. And in the midst of the throne and surrounding the throne were four living creatures full of eyes before and behind. And the first creature was like a lion and the second creature like a calf. And the third creature had the face of a man and the fourth creature. Uh, creature was like a flying eagle, and the, each of the four living creatures had six wings, and there were full of eyes all around and within, and they did not cease day and night, singing, Holy, 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 Father Yahuwah Almighty, who was and is and is to come. 
And when those creatures give glory and honor and thanks to him who sat on the throne, to him who lives forever and ever, the 24 elders fall down before him who sat on the throne and worship him who lives forever and ever and bow with their kippet before the throne, saying, You are worthy, O Yahuwah, to receive glory and honor and power, for you created all things, and by your will they exist and were created. So with that, let me go in and show some of the things that uh, John was witnessing. Okay, now we get to the thrust of our presentation, and that's to show that John was witnessing and describing the Enoch Zodiac. Uh, he probably was studying it, and as he did, and looking up to the heavens, Yahuwah gave him further revelation. <clears throat> so what I did here is I went in and highlighted uh, some things here that I think are important, and I'm going to go back and I'm going to show how they are describing the Enoch Zodiac. First in verse 2, we see, And immediately I was in the Spirit, and behold... A throne was set in the heavenly scroll. Let's go look at the heavenly scroll. There it is. This is the Enoch Zodiac, the heavenly scroll. The flying scroll, that, as Zechariah described it, uh, because it has four living creatures or angels with two sets of wings on each side, uh, flying it around, as Ezekiel said. In the middle here, the center wheel, is the throne room. So just like uh, John said, and immediately I was in the spirit, and behold, a throne was set in the heavenly scroll. There it is. There's the throne set in the heavenly scroll. Now, let's go look at it in detail. <clears throat> get rid of that thing. All right. And let's get rid of that thing. I'm going to bring that back up here in a minute. Um, but for now, let's get rid of it. Okay, so here's the throne. <clears throat> now, he went on to say... Uh, over here, and there was a rainbow surrounding the throne. There it is, verse 4, a rainbow surrounding the throne. Right there, a little pointer. And I have it linked over there to Revelation chapter 4. So he said there was a throne in the heavenly uh, scroll, and there was a rainbow throne, and there's the rainbow as Enoch drew. So he was obviously looking at the Enoch Zodiac. So we go down over here in verse 4. And surrounding the throne were 24 seats, and sitting on the seats I saw 24 elders. Now, <clears throat> Enoch illustrated that <clears throat> as stars. I'm going to move it over here, and I'm going to zoom in on it so we can take a closer look at it. And what we'll find, you know, where John said there were 24 elders, he was taught, Enoch illustrated those as stars, okay? And then also, John said that the 24 elders down here fell down before him who sat on the throne. So there was 24 elders and they were falling before the throne. Let's, let me get a pointer over here. And we're going to count these things that Enoch drew. These stars. All right. Let's count them. Let's start on the left and kind of work our way over. There's one, there's two, there's three, there's four, there's five, there's six, there's seven, there's eight, there's nine, there's ten, there's eleven, there's twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, that's the moon, doesn't count, twenty, twenty-one, twenty-two, 23 and 24. 24 stars illustrated by uh, Enoch and the Enoch Zodiac. <clears throat> and John recognized them as elders before the throne. So let's move this back over here. So there's 24 stars. And you notice they're all falling before the throne. The thrust of them are the most up most of them are down here at the bottom. They've fallen before the throne exactly as John saw in Revelation. There's a few of them still up there, but they're in the process of falling down there. <laughs> anyway, um let's move this back over there so we can kind of continue on our quest to figure out what it was John was talking about. All right. So we see now, you know, John said there was a rainbow throne. We see that. He said that there were four beasts surrounding the throne. Singing holy, holy, holy. And we see that there. Let me grab this pointer. Move it back over to where it's supposed to be. There's one beast singing holy, holy. See his mouth open, singing holy, holy, holy. Holy, holy. Right there. All four of them singing holy, holy, holy. All right. 
And let's go back over here and see what else John had to say. So, so far, we saw there is a throne and a heavenly scroll. We saw that. We saw that it's a rainbow throne. We saw that. We saw it was surrounded by 24 elders, illustrated stars. We saw that. We saw that they were all falling before the throne. We saw that. Now let's go and, oh, and we also see that, uh, okay, let's hear, uh, John says, And surrounding the throne were living creatures full of eyes uh, before and behind. And the first creature was like that of a lion, and the second creature like that of a, a calf or an ox, and the third creature had a face of a man, and the fourth creature was like a flying eagle. What is he looking at? Well, let's go see. He is looking at the four cardinal points of the zodiac. Uh, as I described in my presentation with Ezekiel, Ezekiel saw the same thing. He described the Enoch zodiac too. And what he's describing here is each of the 12 tribes of Israel were associated with one of the signs of the zodiac. Judah was associated with Leo the lion, Ephraim with Taurus the bull or the ox or the calf, however you want to say it. Uh, Reuben was associated with Aquarius, which is the water bearer, the man. And Dan was associated with Scorpio, which was uh, can be a scor scorpion or an eagle. So what John is describing here is the four cardinal points of the Enoch Zodiac. He says the first creature was like a lion. That would be Leo. And the second, like a calf. That would be the ox. And the third had the face of a man. That would be Reuben. And the fourth, like that of a flying eagle. So we see, again, he is describing the Enoch Zodiac in great detail. And now we see that uh, they were full of eyes around and within. <clears throat> well, what is he talking about there? Now, if you listen to my presentation on Ezekiel, he said the same thing. Ezekiel described the exact same Zodiac of Enoch. <laughs> but what is he talking about? Well, let's go look at it. What he was referring to with eyes around, all around is he's referring to the signs. Each of the signs that surround all around the throne were the uh, signs of the zodiac. Each one of them, you know, they were, they were people like here's Adam and Eve, and there's the bull, and there's the lamb, the ram, and there's Pisces, the fish, and there's uh, Yahushua, the water bearer, mikvating the earth, mikvating the earth. And so they're, you know, they're people or animals. They're not mythical things like you see in the corrupted zodiac with naked women and half beasts and all that kind of stuff. None of that's in the real one. But they're full of eyes all around, exactly <clears throat> as both Ezekiel and John proclaimed. They were looking at the Enoch zodiac. So they were full of eyes around and within. Now we keep going. They're singing, holy, holy, holy. We saw that. There are all four of them singing, holy, holy, holy. Uh, and they fell. The 24 elders fell before the throne. So I don't really know, uh, you know, about you, but when I look at it and I read it, I read in the book of Revelation that John was studying the Enoch Zodiac. He was looking at the stars and trying to understand their meaning. And, you know, because Yahuwah had created these things as a witness to all mankind, says Scripture. And Yahuwah had given him further revelation to, into these things. And John was describing, you know, as Yahuwah, as Yahuwah, Yahuwah told him, he said, come here and let me show you the things that must take place based on the heavenly scroll. So Yahuwah was showing him the things that would take place on earth from the period of time Yahushua was, uh, made his sacrifice until the time he returns, the age of Pisces. That's what the book of Revelation reveals. It's a 2,000-year plan. Uh, and a, and a, he revealed what would take place on earth based on what was written in the heavenly scroll. Um, this has been Rav Shaul, uh, presentation of the Sabbath covenant uh, from the perspective of a Nazarene. Hallelujah. I encourage everyone to rediscover the heavenly scroll, the original revelation from the Creator to all mankind. I restore this vital revelation in my book, Creation Cries Out, 2nd Edition, The Maseroth, on Amazon Books in print and Kindle, and on the book patch, $10 for the full-color PDF.